Hello learners, welcome to NIS studio. I am Dr. Anjana Agarwal talking on micronutrients. In another video, you have understood the value of macronutrients, their functions, food sources, etc. Now, what are micronutrients? Minerals and vitamins are called micronutrients. You can see various kinds of foods here. Very tempting one, not only in taste but color wise also. They are all rich sources of vitamins. Let us see what are vitamins. They are essential for regulating all body functions. Though they are required in a small quantity, microgram, milligram, but their deficiency can cause many diseases. We also categorize vitamins into two categories, fat soluble vitamins and water soluble vitamins. What are these? Fat soluble vitamins are four types, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K and water soluble vitamins are vitamin B complex which contain eight vitamins and vitamin C. Let us understand one by one. What are the functions of vitamin A? Everybody knows that vitamin A is good for the eyes, but it plays the role in our body more than that. So, it is needed for proper functioning of the eyes, healthy skin and that skin not only of which you see on top of the body, but also the inner lining of the tract. Digestive tract, nose, mouth, throat, etc. It also supports growth and development of the children. Very necessary for enhancing the immunity and protection from the diseases. From where you will get it? Again, this can be obtained from the animal sources or plant sources. Liver, egg yolk, fish, liver oil, milk and milk products are very good sources of vitamin A. But it is also available in enough quantity. In green leafy vegetables, red, yellow, orange fruits and vegetables. However, when we talk of vitamin A from the plant sources, they are available in the form of carotene, particularly the beta carotene and our body can convert this beta carotene into the vitamin A to perform various kinds of functions. Now, we will talk of vitamin D. It requires for the formation and maintenance of a strong teeth and bones. Besides this, it helps in proper absorption and utilization of calcium and phosphorus. It supports the muscle functions and immunity. Everybody knows that it is obtained from the sunlight because your body can convert this sunlight absorption of the vitamin D in one chemical form to the other chemical form inside the body. It reaches the skin where vitamin D is synthesized and transferred to the bloodstream by going through various chemical process inside the body. It is directly available from eggs liver, fish liver oils, milk, butter and some 
Fortified ghee and refined oils are also available. But you have to have good amount of sunlight. Another vitamin which is fat soluble is vitamin E, which is very very important for every cellular function because it prevents the destruction of certain substances in presence of oxygen, which we term as free radicals. You have a cell, on that you have a cell membrane. If vitamin E is not present, that cell membrane can be damaged and you can understand that if cell membrane is not functioning well, that your cell will also not function well. So overall we can say the vitamin E acts as an antioxidant. You can get vitamin E from variety of sources, particularly the sunflower seeds is a richer source of vitamin E. Almonds are also very good including the vegetable oils like corn, soybean, sunflower are also very good source of vitamin E and some other foods also contain vitamin E in different quantities. Let us understand, let us understand about vitamin K. Most of us know that vitamin K K is required for clotting of the blood. As you can see in this diagram, where the vitamin K is there, then clot can easily be formed. And variety of proteins are also required to form the clot. But beyond that, it is also required to support the bone health. So vitamin K is essential not only for clotting of blood but for our bone health also and this is abundantly available in green leafy vegetables, egg yolk, liver, chicken, cheese, milk are good sources of vitamin K and C it can also be synthesized in our large intestine in presence of healthy bacteria which is present in our intestinal flora. So you have understood the four fat soluble vitamins A, D, E, K, their functions and food sources. Now we will understand about the vitamin B complex. When we use the word vitamin B complex, it includes eight water soluble vitamins, thymine, riboflavin, Niacin, pentathonic acid, pyridoxine, folic acid, vitamin B12 and biotin. Sometime it is also known as vitamin B1, vitamin B2, vitamin B3, vitamin B5, vitamin B6, vitamin B9 and B12 and biotin. Let us understand why this all 8 vitamins are required because they participate in utilization of carbohydrate, protein and fat at different metabolic cycles in the body. So each have a specific purpose, a specific role but in general we are talking of the B complex as such. So you need to have all of them. They help in digestion and improves our appetite. They are essentially necessary for normal functioning of our nervous system. They are also required for proper growth and development, helps the body organs to function normally, healthy way. They are required for formation of RBCs and other compounds in the body. All these vitamin B complex are available in different kinds of variety in varying amounts. Largely if we keep on consuming these sources like liver, poultry, meat, fish, eggs which are generally consumed by non-vegetarian people but for vegetarian lot of varieties available from whole grain cereals and pulses, fruits and vegetables particularly green leafy vegetables 
and most of us are consuming milk and milk products where they are also getting the vitamins. When we are talking of vitamin C, it is very very essential for the formation of the substance that holds the cells together and that substance is known as collagen. And that is why it is very much needed for strong teeth and bones. And very interestingly, you will know that it is also required for the production of hemoglobin and other substances in the body. I told you that it is essentially required for utilization of other nutrients in the body and particularly the iron and vitamin C combination is required. It helps in fighting the germs which causes the disease. So it facilitates the recovery from illness. So whenever you have the any kind of cough and cold it is said that you consume extra amount of vitamin C. It is available in large amount of citrus fruits, orange, lemon are citrus fruits and amla is one of the richest source of vitamin C followed by guava though it is not a citrus fruit. Vegetables like capsicum, tomato are good sources. Green leafy vegetables are very good source of vitamin C. Spinach, cabbage, coriander leaves are vitamin C rich sources. Good people always think the vitamin C is available only in orange and lemon but believe it that large quantity of vitamin C is available in coriander leaves, cabbage, capsicum, tomato etc. and we you keep on eating in a salad or in a chutney etc. You can have enough amount of vitamin C through these sources or preparations. Now we will talk about the minerals. Minerals are hard. They are elements found in earth, rock, sea, soil and reach to the body or reach to the food what we eat. And there are about 19 minerals which are required in a small quantity, maybe in micrograms, maybe in milligrams, but they are essential for normal functioning of the body. Some of the minerals which are known to most of us are calcium, iron, iodine, zinc, magnesium, sodium, potassium, phosphorus, selenium are very important one. They do not provide any calories in spite of that they are essential for our body functions. They are present in a small quantity in different body tissues, cells and bones. They participate in many vital functioning and essential for metabolism and maintenance of the body. As I told you in case of vitamins, they participate to draw out the energy from macronutrients like carbohydrate, protein and fat. Minerals are also essential for those activities. Let us talk about the main mineral that is calcium which is present in largest amount in the body particularly in the bones. It requires for the muscular contraction blood clotting and functioning of our nerves. Calcium or phosphorus perform equally and they should be available in the body in the equal ratio and particularly when it is required for formation of bones. Excess of phosphorus may deplete the calcium. Now it is very very important point here we always talk of the calcium and we keep on consuming the extra amount of calcium from variety of sources including the food and the supplements but we never realize that excess of phosphorus is depleting the calcium not always the less amount of intake of calcium. 
for better utilization of calcium vitamin D is also needed. It is largely available in milk and milk products, but it is also available in green leafy vegetable. In some cases, it is bound form and not easily utilized by the body. It is also found in sesame seeds in enough quantity, but some amount has to be limited in consuming these seeds. And only cereal that is called ragi or nachni, in some places it is also known as madhua in Uttarakhand, that is richest source of calcium in terms of the whole grain cereals. If we do not have enough calcium, what will happen? It will affect the bone development, particularly of children, women and elders. And deficiency of calcium may be known as rickets in children and osteoporosis in adults. In this picture, it is very clearly seen the child is having the bowed legs. And that means it is suffering from the rickets and that may be due to the calcium intake which is low and also the vitamin D is also low which together is not giving the enough strength to the leg. In case of the elders, lady here her back is bended, that term is called osteomalacia that means bones have not enough strong to stay st still but they are bended but they are not broken. But in other case which we call it osteoporosis you can see the network thus bones become weak and porous that is why the name is given the osteoporosis there is a high risk of fracture which is commonly found in women particularly during postmenopausal stage. Now we will talk another important mineral that is iron which makes our blood red and we make us our life very active. It is one of the major component of hemoglobin that is present in red blood cells. What is the function? It helps in better transport of oxygen to the body cells via blood. The oxygen we keep on breathing, that oxygen goes to the blood but for that iron is very much needed and it is available in plant sources or animal sources. The green leafy vegetables are very good sources, pulses are very good sources, cereals are very good sources but on the plant animal sources egg yolk or meat are good amount of iron is present there. What is the difference with the iron present in the plant sources or animal sources? Because iron in the plant sources, I just told you the green leafy vegetables, cereals, pulses, etc. But there are some inhibitors present in them which inhibit the absorption of iron. But when we are taking the iron from animal sources, that is better absorbed. There are some inhibitors there, we will talk a little later. The iron deficiency is present at global level which is known as anemia and it is also present in large number in women and children in our own country. Young girls between the age of 12 and 18 years need more iron rich foods in their diet because of the menstrual loss of iron. During pregnancy we require extra amount of iron for healthy development and growth of the fetus. We have just now mentioned the inhibitors which decreases the absorption of iron. Certain naturally occurring constituents in foods like oxalates, phytates, caffeine and tannin are available which is available found in tea, coffee, cereals in enough amount which hampers the absorption of iron. But at the same time vitamin C and some proteins can increase the 
iron absorption that is why they are also known as enhancers of iron. Here is the example if you eat some iron rich food like along with the tea it will not be absorbed by the body. If you eat iron rich food along with the vitamin C or some kind of citrus fruit it will be absorbed by the body. Third mineral of high importance is iodine which is needed for the synthesis of thyroxine hormone that is produced by the thyroid gland. And thyroxine regulates many vital functions of the body. It is essential for growth and development and particularly the brain development. During the pregnancy when fetus is growing, iodine is very much essential and during the growth and development period of childhood, the iron and iodine are essential. From where we will get it? Iodine is also available in natural water and natural soil. Sea foods and sea salts are very rich source of iodine and nowadays iodized salts which is fortified with iodine is available for consumption of iodine. The substance which reduces the utilization of iodine in the body are called goitrogens and they are present in some of the vegetables soya bean, cabbage, cauliflower, radish, turnip etc. And if they are consumed in large quantity then there may not be availability of the iodine in the body rather it is not good for the people who are having the thyroid diseases. Particularly in hilly area you may see some women or other people with a large neck that is called goiter which is the enlargement of neck regions. It also causes mental retardation in children so they perform badly in academics and we are not able to relate this iodine deficiency in them. There are many other cases or disability due to the deficiency of iodine. Most important nutrient we need is water. Why it is so important? Because more than 50% of our body is said to be made with water though it is present in terms of the fluid in the body. It is present in all living cells inside of the cell and outside the cell. Mostly the cells and other tissues are bathed in some kind of fluid that provides the protection from the shock or they do not combine but they become a carrier or start communicating through that fluid. So water helps in digestion, absorption and transportation of the nutrients inside the body. It helps to excrete the unwanted material in the form of urine and etc. It maintains the body temperature through perspiration. When your body is too much heated in the hot environment, you start perspiring because body wants to maintain the body temperature. So one should drink 6 to 8 glasses of safe drinking water every day. So water balance in the body is very very essential. So whatever amount you are drinking, it is lost through the body in maybe in the sweat form, maybe urine, tears, feces, etc. And similar amount of water should be drunk in the form of plain water, milk, fruit juices, kanji, etc. So these are simple form of the water or beverages we can say you can drink. So these are some of the examples. You have understood the micronutrients. Micronutrients contain vitamins and minerals at large. See the how many types of micronutrients are there? How many types of 
vitamins are there four fat soluble eight vitamin b complex vitamin c the n number of minerals are needed by the body so if you will eat all types of food on a regular basis then only you will have the sufficient amount of micronutrients and you must always take into consideration without the presence of micronutrient your body functions will not happen as they should or they will make you more healthy thank you very much